I'm normally interviewing the other person. <laughs> Hello, my name is James Cook, and this is the James Cook Podcast. Uh, today, we're going to be talking with Ben Ryan, uh, voice from Fort Worth, Texas, great friend of mine, into the Texas red dirt scene for years now. He hosts a nightly show on 95.9 The Ranch. He also hosts a show in Corsicana at The Ranch out there. Uh, he does a local music showdown. And this year, he has been nominated for Broadcast Personality of the Year for the Texas Country Music Awards. Ben Ryan, how you doing, buddy? Fantastic. <laughs> I mean, I, I work nights, so I, I woke up maybe an hour ago. I, not to get too far off track, but I work part-time at a brewery. Yeah. And I ran by to get my paycheck. And the, um, the owner and brewmaster, and he's a friend of mine, his name's uh, Ryan McWhorter. He also has been in a couple of bands. And he's starting a, a band called Chattahoochee. It's a cover band. And one of the guys in the band, he's like, hey, wait, you're in radio, right? And I go, yeah. And he goes, why well, do a podcast? We should get together and do it. I go, okay, yeah, just get my info from Ryan and, I'll, and we can get together. He goes, all right, I do it mornings at 8.30 a.m. And I just went, well, I got to get to work, man. <laughs> 8.30 in the morning? Come on. Yeah, I met you a few years back in Fort Worth. Uh, when I was out there doing the local music scene, you're very much in tune with the local scene so much that I see you at shows all the time. You've been to a few of my shows. I've seen you go to other people's shows. Uh, and then we got to talk a few times and I got to know a little bit about your past. Found out you're not even from Fort Worth. You're from the San Angelo area or is that where you're originally from or is that where you started radio? Actually, I was born in El Dorado, Arkansas and I grew up in Magnolia, which is about 54 miles east of Texarkana. And if you've ever watched Smoking the Bandit, the highway they run down, that goes right through my hometown. Oh, all right. Uh, and then I moved to Fort Worth in 98. I actually, I started radio at the ranch in Fort Worth. Oh. Growing up, I always had a radio on. And I would, you know, with the, the cassette tapes, you know, hit record, record my favorite, call the, call the radio station, be like, hey, can you play Bare Naked Ladies? Uh, who needs sleep? <laughs> and it's like, they're like, that's an album cut. We don't have that. And I'm like, yeah, it's on this CD, which I do that now. You were that guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I get those phone calls now, but I would sit there and I'd hit record and let it, you know, whatever, just was always told, you'll never make any money, never make any money, which, I mean, you work in the business, so you understand yeah. that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I was working at a rally auto parts and I tried to join the military and I dropped 55 pounds in two months to make weight. Mm -hmm. And I got, went to METS and I passed everything with flying colors and I got medically disqualified from every branch of the military because I can't get a smallpox vaccination. So, I was discouraged and like, well, what am I going to do now? And I heard a advertisement for Connecticut School of Broadcasting and it was on the radio, go figure. <laughs> and I went for the um, open house and it ended up being kind of like an interview type deal, seeing if you were going to be a good fit for the school. And that night they offered me a scholarship to go. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, I need to get like an entry level job in radio because if I'm going to go to school for this, I need to pop out and have a plan, you know? This was. 2008 I had always listened to the ranch and I always wanted to work there and I emailed rebel the morning show co-host and I was like hey this is what my plan is I just need to get my foot in the door and she goes I need to start off in promotions well I get a phone call that Monday he goes hey rebel said we needed to hire you so you need to come up and fill an application oh just like that yeah, and I was like, uh, okay so I showed up and <laughs> my first job that, in <laughs> yeah my first job in radio was Slinging t-shirts and bumper stickers, setting up tents and all that kind of stuff. Starting from the bottom. That's how a lot of us get started, man. We'll just, um, exactly. You need your trash thrown out. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, you know, I worked a lot of events and I watched the jocks and everything. And Kevin McCoy was a program director at the time. And he had heard that I knew how to use Adobe audition. And so he's like, all right, well, let's see what you got. And dude, I sucked. It was, it was horrible. <laughs> it was bad. Like there's still, one of my commercials that was a fake one is on YouTube somewhere. Oh man, like, I gotta get hold of it. But it it's definitely oh man, it's bad. I talk like this through the whole thing and I'm trying to sell custom truck and car parts. <laughs> um realized that I knew how to do some audio engineering or producing, whatever you want to call it. And so I started doing production and then um producing Texas Music Interactive, yeah. which was a show but way before its time. 
and we had webcam set up. We had the chat room. You can call us a voicemail. You call the request line. You can text us. I mean, everything that radio stations are doing now, we were trying to do back then. It lasted for a couple of years. And, and then whenever they, uh, they were going to get a, a solid night guy to come in and be part of it, like I applied for it, didn't get it. And at the time, honestly, like I still needed a lot of work. I didn't get that job. I was a little discouraged. And so I just, I went to tab.org and allaccess.com and I was just going through the list and resume, air check, resume, air check constantly. And a year later, the station in San Angelo hits me up and goes, Hey, you interested in a full-time radio gig? What station was that? That was KKCN uh, 103.1 Kicking Country. The reason they hired me is because my experience at the ranch and I was, I was setting up interviews and stuff. I, I was a year, two years into radio, setting up interviews and working with uh, managers and promoters and all sorts of stuff. They were like, hey, so we have, we have two country stations out here. One is 100% mainstream and the other one is 50-50 and we're in the same cluster. And we're trying to get into the uh, Texas red dirt scene. Two weeks later, I was out there. And they they hired me because they wanted to make that switch from a 50-50 station to 100% Texas Red Dirt. Whenever, so, when you went to the station, did you have your beard? <laughs> I got to say that like that because I'm sorry. You showed me once a picture and you're like, this is me in San Angelo. I go, that's you. <laughs> oh, dude. My, my nephew, my mom showed him a picture of me or my dad, one of the two, so showed, them a, showed my nephew a picture of me without a beard. He goes, that not boo. That not boo. <laughs> it's, it's not boo. I was actually very clean shaven whenever I moved out there. The San Angelo vibe has got to be something different. It's Who are the bands that you were look, listening to in San Angelo that were local there that you were kind of uh, getting introduced to in the early 2010s? So in San Angelo, there wasn't just a whole lot of local country bands, believe it or not. There was one called Crossing Tyler, Whiskey Skyline, and then Jesse England was one of the ones that was local out there. And actually, I, she was the first local artist I met there. Jesse, because, the one we know from Fort Worth? Uh-huh. Oh, wow. Yeah. She's from um, San Angelo. See, I'm learning. Yeah. Uh, she had heard that there's a new DJ in town, and I walked into Blaine's Pub, and she walks up. She goes, you're the new DJ. And I was like, what? Is there a sign on me or something? And uh, <laughs> we got to talking and became friends. And mm -hmm. Judson Cole was someone I had heard about because their keyboard player, I don't know if he still plays with them, Corey Rogers, mm -hmm. who um, now lives in Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a DJ in Wichita Falls. And we, we were real close. We, we hung out. I met him when he was like, I think, 17, just starting radio. And uh, he told me he was moving to San Angelo. And then he just kind of kept me updated on all things San Angelo. And he let me know you need to be looking out for Judson Cole. And Corey was a jock in San Angelo for a while, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. I forgot all about that. Mm -hmm. He started doing radio out there. Because yeah. Blaine's Pub, is that just, that's probably the place in San Angelo. House of Fifi also has some bands as well. Mm -hmm. And then there was also Midnight Rodeo. But, you know, people more or less saw Blaine's as the place to play because that's where all the greats played. Steven Burge were coming through, Whiskey Myers, Cody Johnson. I remember, um, I think it was Cody Johnson, his, one of his first singles came out and, um, God, we gave him hell because he was late for the interview. <laughs> uh, he, uh, these are all guys in the beginning, so it's around mm -hmm. early 2010s. The, there's the beginning Six of the market. careers. Six Market Boulevard. Uh, mm -hmm. I know they played Bla uh, Blaine's a lot. Um, oh yeah, they got rowdy, <laughs> real rowdy. <laughs> Those Drew guys Kennedy would Drew Kennedy would uh, pass through quite a bit as well. Uh, then Fort Worth called you back, or how did that situation occur? How did you make it back to Fort Worth? <laughs> did they bag you, man? No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't that at all. It was not that at all. <laughs> Had a falling out with uh, with the management at the San Angelo station. Had a little bit of a disagreement, so to speak, with uh, the bosses and ended up uh, resigning. And then I went on the road with uh, Phil Hamilton as tour manager and, and merch guy. Cool. I was on Got the road with Phil for Phil. like, yeah, but like eight months or something like that. And I remember when the word got out that I was leaving San Angelo, it was kind of weird because I had three different bands hit me up and they're like, hey, do you need a job? Like, we need a tour manager and you know the ins and outs because I would go on the road with whiskey skyline here and there and just like be a manager, but I was really just going to drink a beer. 
uh, and enjoying the show. But <laughs> Making sure they got paid at the end of the night. I'm done. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. We were on the road and I got a phone call from a radio promoter and she goes, hey, the program director at the ranch just got fired or let go or whatever. And there, and she was like, you need to go up there and apply. We need you working there. And I was cool. just like, well, thanks for the heads up. So, and as I'm walking in, I'll never forget Andy Meadows. I went to the wrong building first because they were in the towers and cause they're renovating the jet building. And so I walk in and I was just like, uh, this isn't, this isn't where I parked my car. And so <laughs> I go back out and I go to the right building and I get up to the 13th floor, suite 1300. And I walk in and Andy Meadows standing right there. He's operations manager. And he goes, what are you doing here? And I go, well, I've applied with your PD like eight times and he hadn't responded to my email. So I figured I'd come drop it off in person. There you go. Play, play, playing the card of, hey, I don't know that your program director's gone yet because it hasn't hey. been announced. So I, I called Justin like the next day because I knew his phone was going off the hook. And I was just like, hey, man, just want to say congratulations. I know you've been wanting this for a while, blah, blah. And he goes, hey, I need a night jock. I'm on the road with Phil. We're in Manhattan, Kansas, opening for Casey Donahue Band at a theater. So it's going to be a good show, right? And I get the call. Hey, you got the job. You start Monday. This is a Saturday. Cool. And I'm like, uh-oh. Because Phil's got shows coming up the next week. Oh. And I can't, I can't do radio and, and be his TM and sling merch at the same time. But I had started looking for a replacement in the event that I did get this position. Yeah. And so I, I had the replacement ready. So I just went to Phil. I was like, hey, man, I just want to talk to you real quick. He's like, what? And I, I tell him. And you could tell that he was upset that I was leaving, but he knows it. You know, it's kind of like when you break up with your ex, you're like, yeah, she belongs to the streets. You know, I belong to radio, <laughs> not the road. Your support for local music is man, just tremendous. Every time I go to Fort Worth, um, I expect to see you on a Sunday night. If I go out to mags, mm -hmm. um, if I go to what I used to see at the Capitol bar back in the day, I've oh, even played really filthy big nasties and I've seen you at shows there. So mm -hmm. you are very much somebody who likes to really check out the local scene. What's something about the Fort Worth sound that you notice that really keeps you coming to the shows? I think it's probably how eclectic it is. Yeah. Cause you've really got, You've got guys like, you know, Skylar Payne who have, you know, more of a, just a, from the soul, like rocking, like great, just energy, energetic show and, you know, no shoes and that foot is just shaking on the, on the stool the whole time. And then you have, <laughs> you've got, you know, cats, uh, there's this new guy, Garrett Bradford. He's got a song called Honkiest of Tonkers and it's just, it's country <laughs> and Western, both types. And then you've got some very eclectic <clears throat> outlets of the female, um, female demographic, you know, Jackie Darlene. And then, you know, Jesse is here now in England. Yeah. Um, Simone, Nicole, Hannah, um, Owens. I mean, there's just a lot of great female artists out here. And that's one thing that I've noticed with our local music scene is we tend to ha we have more female artists than the other local music scenes around the state. Well, and even aside from, you know, male artists, female artists, we still, we also have like some pretty young artists. Uh, Frankie Leone, she is 17 maybe. And she played locally brewed live. And I had no clue that she was so young. And I was talking to her dad and he's like, yeah, she's not even 18 yet. And I was like, how does she sing like that? And then Jack, <laughs> Jack Barksdale, you know, he's what, 12-ish. Oh, and he <laughs> plays guitar better than a yeah. lot of people I know. <laughs> Not only that, he has his uh, his songwriting content is that of an older man. Like he, mm -hmm. I, I remember hearing him and going, "Like, dude, that's a, a song a fifty five year old would write." It mm -hmm. was about like hard times in life. It's like, twelve. <laughs> like, how, how do you know this stuff? How are you doing this? And he's nailing it. He's nailing the uh, the subject matter. So yeah, Jack Barksdale, a very very cool uh, songwriter. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and one I, one thing I really like about him is he's very very respectful. Oh yeah. He walks up and he'll shake my hand and how you doing, Mr. Ben? Or, you know, something <laughs> like that. Just like su super nice kid. And, and he's going to go far. Yeah. And I think he's already, 
he's already established himself and, and really rooted what he wants to do. And the best thing about him is not, not only does he want to show off his talents, he wants to be schooled in other people's talents. He knows mm -hmm. I'm only as good as the people I listen to. And he's very good at just listening to those people. I love seeing him with other artists. It's such a good vibe from him because I don't know any other kid that would be so interested in other people's music as much as he is. So that, I think oh, that's yeah. something I love. I love watching. Um, so out there in Fort Worth, man, you getting you're getting the, the good stuff. All right. I can brag about one time I met Weird Al. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, I was talking about him the other night. Oh, he's the best. He's the best. It was Amish one of the, paradise. It was, oh, let me tell you, I went to see him live and there's like this 60 year old dude next to me and I keep laughing because he's kind of singing along to some of it. Mm -hmm. I'm like, that's funny. He knows eat it. When it got to Amish paradise, this dude was like fist in the air, just like rapping, <laughs> turning up the butter. Like he was on it. Dude. it was so good. <laughs> I am Ezekiel thinks that my mind is gone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are getting to see a lot of more people. I think the first time that I was ever wowed for you, I'd already known who you were. I was seeing you online. You had met Garth Brooks. How was that experience? Uh, okay. I just got to say, I, I, I'm going to start it off with this. And you said it's okay to say this word. A lot of people shit on Garth Brooks, but he is one of the most genuine and humble people I've ever met. Word. Um, he walks in the door and I'm sitting there and I'm like, I'm going to meet Garth Brooks. I'm going to meet Garth Brooks. Yeah, man. My friend's with me. I'm like, we're going to meet Garth Brooks. <laughs> and and um, so him and Trisha Yearwood walk in. First thing he Unreal. says, hi, hey y'all, I'm Mr. Yearwood. <laughs> and I was like, okay, this is going to be fun. And he sits down and Trisha's talking and he sits down, and he pulls his shoe off. He's wearing tennis shoes and he just starts scratching his foot. He's like, man, I had this itch. It didn't bother me. He's like scratching his foot and he puts his shoe back on. He's like, college football fans? I'm like, yeah, University of Arkansas. And he's like, good luck, buddy. You know, he's <laughs> OSU guy. Um, um, but anyway, so the ladies went over and talked to Trisha and me and the fellow went over and we're talking to Garth. We're talking about college football. We're talking about music. We're talking about just anything under the sun you talk about with your buddies, right? And then they're like, okay, well, if you brought something, you can get it autographed. And this couple that was in there with us had a huge bag. They'd already been to one of the shows, huge bag, already been to one of the shows. And um, Garth goes, did y'all buy all that? They go, yeah, yeah, we have the receipt if you want to see it. And he goes, no. Nah. Give me 250 bucks. Walks over. Hands 250 bucks cash to these people and goes, Prince of Garth don't pay for merch. And they also had somebody sizing all of us up while we're in there and gave us a to-go bag or a goodie bag. Had a Garth shirt, a Trisha shirt, keychains, koozies, stickers, hats, just wow. everything in it. And it had our exact size and they were labeled for each one of us. And so not only did they get their money paid back for that, they got another goodie bag each. So... He's really good to his fans, puts on a hell of a show, and Man. was just a cool guy to talk to. And, like, we took goofy pictures together. There's one where it's like Garth is holding me, and I'm just like. Let me ask you this. You, got, you get to see Texas uh, bands a lot of time. Fort Worth will make or break. They'll, they'll make a band. I've seen it happen. Uh, what's a band that just blew you away the first time you heard them? It's tough. I mean, does it need to be a whole band or maybe an acoustic act or something? Whatever, just someone that blew you away altogether. I think it was a girl I was dating at the time. Uh, she was like, hey, there's this girl. Her name's Jackie Darlene. She's amazing. And I, I had no clue who she was. I had not heard any of the music. And she was playing down the street from the radio station one night. And she's playing. And I'm sitting there going, holy, wow. She put out some great songs. She's got great vocals. And just she blew me away the first time I saw her. And then um, probably... So, you know who Garrett Bryan is, right? Oh, yeah. Good old Garrett, yeah, he, man. He was in with Callahan Divide. They split up. And the first time I heard his solo project, like, honestly, I've been riding my bike a lot. And I'll just put it on Garrett Bryan. And I'll just play his library while I'm riding my bike around. Like, I love his stuff. And yeah. he sent me the new record, listening to that, blown away because it's got – he, he incorporates several elements from all types of music. 
And so it's just, it, it's different and I like it. And it's very heartfelt. Like I believe what he's saying. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I uh, so. love watching him live online. Watching Garrett is very much like watching, and I know it's because he's on piano, but it's very much a Jerry Lee Lewis type mm-hmm. vibe. Like he's giving you the fire and he's oh, yeah. coming from the belly. Um, those are great. I love your, I love your answers. So let's talk <laughs> real quick about being a DJ and let me know what's the best thing about being <laughs> on air personality. I'm on the ones and the twos. I'm on the ones and the twos. On air personality. Let's talk uh, about what's the best thing about your job. Um, honestly, man, I've always, I've always listened to music no matter what type it is, I've just always listened to music. And I think the thing I like the most about it is finding a new band and sharing it with people. Mm. Um, that, you know, that's one of the more rewarding things because, you know, people are always, who are the normal bands you hear people talk about every day? And then you're like, okay, well, you like this guy. Have you heard of this guy or this girl? So I think it's really cool to be able to share music with people especially independent music with far less restrictions than, you know, other corporations that have radio stations. You know what I mean? Like the local music showdown. I love doing that because every night you're going to hear a new artist that doesn't have regular airplay on that, on that segment. And so it might be like last night I had Simone Nicole on and a guy named Zach Mayberry. I'd never heard of Zach Mayberry. Zach ended up winning. It was a good song. And I got an email later on last night, right around the time I was signing off. And the, and the email was basically, Hey, we listen from East Texas and we really appreciate um, you play a little bit different music than during the day. And I know a lot of it has to do with local music showdown, sharing the local music with people. And then the other part of it would probably, I'd have to be lying if I said it wasn't cool meeting some of these people. There it is. Yeah. And, it's a great thing, man. I mean, just going to music festivals and, like Mile Zero Fest, Tyler Childers sat down next to me and I told him, hey, I, I don't really want to bother you. I, we've never met. I said, I'm a big fan of your music and I'm going to be bringing you on tonight. Um, I've never seen you live, so looking forward to see you play. And his response, playing guitar, he swings and looks at me and goes, well, if that doesn't put more pressure on me, I don't know what does. <laughs> and it's just the little stories like that, the little, the little things that you pick up along the way, you know, watching – watching shows with, with your buddies that, you know, may have been up there playing beforehand. Um, and it's the camaraderie, the friends that you make, I don't know, just all in all, it's, it's a lot of fun. I just, come on, let's get a little bit more pay. (laughs) (laughs) I'm with that. I'm with that. I guess uh, that answers the second question. What's the worst thing about the job? You wouldn't be the first to say, let's all talk about that pay. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. The, the pay is not the best, but you know, again, you have experiences that, that, you know, nobody can duplicate, man. It's just, they're, they're unreal. I'm going to ask you a couple quick questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, A little bit more about Ben Ryan. Just a, just Uh a, Uh Oh, (laughs) Let me ask you, documentary or reality TV? Documentary. Documentary, okay. Acoustic listening room or honky tonk? That's a tough one. Man, I'd have to say probably acoustic listening room. I'm with you on that. I understand that. Here's another tough one. Tex-Mex or barbecue? Oh. <laughs> oh. I love this. Oh. I'm going to have to go with Tex-Mex. Tex-Mex? Mm-hmm. Now, this one burns, but I think I know how you're going to answer, and it burns right now to ask it because of everything being shut down, but your favorite festival to go to? Uh, Mile Zero Fest. Mile Zero Fest. Tell me a little bit about that. Key West, tell me a little bit about that. Kudos to the staff because they (laughs) they make sure that everything is taken care of. The artists are completely taken care of. The fans are completely taken care of, and they also get the community involved as well. So your first night there – if you go for like the Tuesday night or whatever, they have a street dance and it, and it doesn't matter if you have a ticket to the festival or not, you're welcome to come. And they have shiny ribs, um, <clears throat> red dirt Rangers, Charlie Crockett. There's always something going on. You got live music from 10 AM until 4 AM wow. each night. So if you miss Brent Cobb playing over here, you can go catch him right over here. You miss Courtney Patton. You can go catch her over here. 
main stage starts at like five and that's the big full band acts with the big amphitheater and everything. And it's just, you know, I've been to a lot of festivals. It's got the, it's got the destination with the things to do like, like a, like a music fest, like a, the one in Colorado steamboat. And then it's also got the rowdiness of, you know, a Larry Joe Taylor at some points. And then you mix those together and it's more of a, yeah, they like to party, but they're also not being rude or anything. You know what, you know what I mean? It's kind of hard to explain. I think it's the perfect amount of party and, and relaxation. Their lineup is, is amazing. I mean, I saw the Mavericks out there. The, the lineup, the location, the staff, I mean, everything is just. Well, uh, Ben, dude, we've been sitting around talking to Ben Ryan, uh, one of my favorites from Fort Worth. He's into the Texas Red Dirt scene. He's been in it for a few years now. He hosts an sh- uh, afternoon show out in Corsicana for the ranch out there, and he also does 95.9 The Ranch in Fort Worth for his nightly show. He supports the local music scene with his local music showdown, and this year he has been nominated for Broadcast Personality of the Year for the Texas Country Music Awards. Man, good luck to you, buddy, and thank you for joining us on the James thank you so much. Podcast. Gosh, I just talked right over you. I'm a terrible radio personality. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. I appreciate your time.